Okay, continuing on with statistics two. Simple question we want to know the answer to. If you had it to do over again, would you have kids? Okay, seems like a simple question, and a couple of different uh, groups have looked at it. Ann Landers ran a poll in her newspaper column. Ann Landers is a syndicated columnist, uh, Dear Ann and Dear Abby, you may have heard of them, they're famous. And her answer was no, 70%. Her replies were over 10,000. I could not find the exact number, but we'll use 10,000. And the margin of error with that will be less than 1%. So I just said, well, plus or minus 1%. That means we are 95% confident that it has to be between 69 and 71% with such a large number on this survey due to statistical error. Well, good housekeeping, somewhat taken back by the notion that everybody, majority of people wish they'd never had their kids, did a similar poll. And they got a result of yes, 95% back with 10,000 people as well. So this means that the answer yes has to be true with 94-96% based on a 95% confidence interval. And so I think you see a problem developing here. How can both of these surveys have done 10,000 people, small confidence intervals, and have such different answers? You know, we're down from no 70% to yes 95%. How is, on earth is this possible? So let's give a little background, a little history of what was actually going on. Ann Landers wrote, uh, did a advice column for letters, and she took a letter written in by a reader, and the reader said, we're a young couple, we're thinking about having kids, but honestly, a lot of our friends have told us these horror stories and how they wish they'd never had their kids. The brats are ruining our lives and they're jealous because we're free and we can travel, go scuba diving, or whatever. So what, what is your advice for us? Should we have kids or just enjoy our freedom that all of our friends with kids seem to be really jealous that, that we still have? And Landers wrote, ran the letter and began getting letters back. And this is not a normal amount of letters back to her. She asked her readers to write in, if you had it to do again, would you have your kids? 70% said no. They wrote some long letters, too. She mentioned in her column why they would never have kids again. Good Housekeeping was writing a col uh, in a column about Ann Landers' things. She goes, we obviously think this is going to shock a lot of people that Ann Landers is saying, according to her readers, according to her readers, most people wish they'd never had kids. And here we're a family magazine. It's good housekeeping, after all. We'd like to know what our readers think. And they wrote back in with a resounding yes, 95%. So this is going to bring up a couple of issues. One, the setting and wording of the question. And Landers came with a preamble of a young couple with their friends that have had problems with their kids who are jealous of their freedom. Good housekeeping came in response to that. So it's in a response to Ann Landers' column, and they were sort of almost asking for a referendum that, that housekeeping and family is a good thing to do. So... The people reading this that write in may be sort of responding to the Ann Lander survey. But even this one has a huge problem. So we mentioned setting and wording. The way the questions were asked is different. But we have a built-in bias. Only people who read Ann Landers are reading her question, and only people who read Good Housekeeping are reading the survey here. And you, you could even start to say, even on that basis, you could get a very big difference. The kind of people who read a good housekeeping magazine may have a bias towards believing housekeeping and family are, are some valuable things to do. They're good. But even besides that, I want to mention one type of bias, and this is so prevalent now, even worse than back then in the Internet age, which is participation bias. You're reading a column from someone like Ann Landers, and it says, if you had it to do over again, would you have kids? Well, let's say you're just having a normal, happy evening at home. Kids have done whatever. Susie hit a home run in softball. Johnny played soccer. Plays a, you know, Billy played the trumpet in the school band. Nothing exciting happened. Are you really going to say, my gosh, I have to write a letter right now? Compared to the family across the street where Billy beat up Susie and punched Mom and stole the car keys because they took his crystal meth away. Now, of course, I'm exaggerating. But my point is, which family has more energy about this question, whether or not they should have kids? You see this in everyday life. Your friends call and tell you when they're mad at someone. They don't call and say, oh, you know, my girlfriend was so wonderful last night, I just want to call and share that with you, or my boyfriend. Particularly, uh, it may, uh, maybe stereotypical, women are uh, alleged to do this more. Maybe I'm wrong. I could do a survey on that and try and find out. Maybe we could do some statistics. But nevertheless, people call when they're upset. They call when they have an emotional issue to discuss. They don't call when things are perfect. And the same thing's going on here. People who are going to write this letter to either one of these organizations are the ones with the most emotion in the issue, which tends to be people that are upset and have something going on. So we have a participation bias. You see this all day long. When you're watching the news and the newscaster says, text this number for yes, that number for no, most of the people watching that program 
Don't text anything. So only people who strongly care on the issue are bothering to vote. When you're on a website and a little window pops up and it says, do you agree with the president on this, yes or no? Click here for the result. I closed the window, so did most of you. You have something to do. And it wasn't take a poll. You were reading something else. So most people simply close the window. They're not voting. So we have only those who choose to participate, which may not represent our population in general. So we have to keep that in mind. I think that anything that requires you to make an active choice to participate, you can throw out the results. And the one that makes me the maddest about this is CNN. Very often in their news, they have a, a poll question that the news audience is asked to participate in, particularly during Lou Dobbs program. And then he'll kind of throw that at the guest. Well, you know, our audience, 80% agree with me that, you know, this is the big problem in America. You know. Well, mostly 80% of the people who chose to watch CNN that night and watch your program in particular, which may already have a big bias built in because they like you and they like your program. B, they got up and found their phone instead of just sitting there having a beer on the couch. So the people who had the energy to participate. So we have level after level of bias built in. Now back to our, should you have children? Around the same time, Newsday, a magazine, and hopefully a little bit more newsworthy than the other two sources, did a random poll. They did 1,000 people. So it's a lot smaller than the other two, but it's random. So it's not as likely to have bias. And they got 91% yes. And there's some other sources I found, the Kansas City poll of about 400 people. Now it's just in Kansas City, so that could be a geographical bias, but it was around 94% yes as well. And it was random. So if Kansas City families are different than families in California, you know, maybe you could have a bias that way but we've eliminated the participation biases that are actually screwing up these two polls. So this, this is true, you can read some articles, and if you're interested, I'll put up links to different articles you can read on this historical screwed up surveying. And there have been others. There have been miscalled presidential elections due to biases in surveys, the famous Dewey defeats Truman headline. Um, so this bias is a huge issue, and a small sample of 1,000 will give me plus or minus 3%. And I'll take a small sample and a little bigger error to have it done right, the right 1,000 in a random sample, compared to huge samples that are not picked in a scientific fashion.